Just hey. one. Cheers. Oh, she, he's busy. I'll wait for you. I know. I'm. Oh, we have to cheers. I'm trying to to find the video, but I guess it's not live on Facebook yet. Oh no, we are live. One second. I just want to share it, uh, and then we'll jump in. This is so okay. un. Uh, oh, and I'm hearing myself. Oh my this god. This is like the beginning of every single live stream event I've ever watched. <laughs> I know. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Um, what is going on here? Oh. Oh. oh, and I'm hearing you. Oh, hi, everybody. My apologies. Oh, my. God. It's so great. It always starts like this. Are we on? Are we live? Can you hear me? Uh, okay. One. Oh, gosh. Oh. And then the middle of it is going to be, I'm sorry, you talk. Oh, I'm sorry, you go. And then at the end, it's going to be, are we still on? <laughs> okay. So we have, we're here for um, Visiting Broadway with Bobby and Linda. And we wanna welcome anybody who might be watching from Facebook or YouTube or right through our direct channel on exp1.com. Um, we do have a, a special edition today, right, Bobby? We do, we have a very special edition and a very special guest. Um, and- I'm oh, very excited. First we have to, because obviously this is more fun with these kind of beverages. Um, what are you drinking today, Miss Linda? It's white wine. Last week, I bought a bottle of wine and I thought, all right, you know, I'm going to treat myself. And I bought like a more expensive bottle. And um, then this week I decided, you know, I'm going to get one that's half the price and see if there's really any difference. And I like this better. So as always, I am a cheap date. Before, okay, real quick. And I know I could go on a long tangent. I was actually reading an article on Facebook this week that said um, the best wines are the mid price. So not the expensive ones and not the super like two buck chuck. It's the ones in the middle. You get more bang for your buck and they taste better. So I like it. It's light. Well, here, what are you drinking? I am drinking. It is. Oh, it's fancy. Uh, it's raspberry absolute. So raspberry vodka with um, this new blackberry fresca that is light. <clears throat> it is the most delicious. So. Man, it looks like water. Right. Which means it's easier to drink. Shall we cheers? Cheers. Ting. Eyes. Eyes. Okay, so All right. we are here for Visiting Broadway. I think this is our fourth episode, Linda. Fourth or fifth, right? Feels like just yesterday that we started. And yet it seems like it's been happening for a year. I don't know. How, our... yeah. and, and how has your week been? Um, my week's been okay. I drove back from California uh, to my home here in Las Vegas on Monday. Um, it was actually a lovely drive. I usually hate making the drive, but um, uh, I enjoyed it. It was fun. I sang a lot of show tunes in my car, so keeping things on theme. Um, I made my way through the entire Next to Normal uh, cast album. So Nice. <laughs> and the other things. And yeah, it's the weather's been okay here in Vegas. Uh, a little hot, but not too crazy yet. Uh, how has your week been? <laughs> Well, it's, you know, Portland, Oregon here is, it's, it's funny. The weather is funny. It'll be gorgeous one minute and then raining the next. And that's how it is every day, all day. And I kind of love it. Um, you know, doing what everybody does, staying in, taking a walk. You know what I miss a lot? Petting the dogs. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Well, because you can't do that now. People don't want you anywhere near their animals. They get like weirded out if you even look at their dogs. But, but um, you know, and I've been singing also. And uh, I've actually been rocking some like 60s pop this week. That's been my thing. I loved your recording of Johnny Angel. And I, you know what? I was inspired. I know. <laughs> I was inspired by your Smule oh, gosh. Uh, video from, uh, what is it? Vampire, Dance of the Vampire? Dance of the Vampires, yeah. Right. And I know that you were, I gotta tell you, Bobby, I was very impressed with your singing voice. I always knew you had a good voice, but this was like another level. And um, so I decided, I usually make smooth recordings with no video, just audio. So I decided I'm gonna try that. So I did, I dreamed a dream. Oh yeah. Oh, did the video. You, um, uh, did you do that version with what's his name from Glee? Or did you- No. Don't make me mad. I won't. No, so, but it's funny because I recorded it and uh, sounded pretty good. 
And then I watched it and I was like, oh geez. So I did it again. I did it like three times and I deleted all of them um, because when I'm singing, I keep on, I'm like, and I keep moving and I'm like, oh, I'm singing, I'm emoting. And then I watch it and I'm like, God, that is so terrible. So I, I have to, I'm gonna work on that because I want to make a nice, I want to I want to return your, your the favor and send you a delightful video. I, I want to see it so bad. Smool is so, for anyone watching, okay? Uh, anyone watching who uh, is a Broadway fan, I would hope everyone, uh, Smool is a magical app uh, that's free, but you can also pay for it. Um, it has a lot of features, but it's basically a karaoke app, but they have tons of show tunes on there. And it's, they, you, they put face filters. They even have like cool, like vocal filters and things. And you sing like on, I don't know where my headphones, you sing on these guys, like your iPhone headphones and you sound like- Sounds amazing. It does actually. I know. It's crazy. And you can like sing with celebrities and stuff on there too, but it's actually fun to sing on your own. And uh, what Linda was talking about, I sang some song from Dance of the Vampires, which is one of my favorite Broadway shows. Um, but it's not a normal, like, it's a Michael Crawford thing. He played it on Broadway. It's like a serious, like, phantomy kind of, and that's not my, like, vocal type or whatever. But um, when I was a teenager, because uh, I was really obese, I mean, um, I would always get cast as, like, old people um, or serious characters. And when I was 17, uh, I auditioned for one of the first um, student productions of Les Mis ever. They had just released the rights. And I, of course, wanted to play Tenardier because that's what makes sense. Uh, and I ended up playing Javert, which I almost quit because I didn't want to. Uh, so that I only bring that up because I had to learn to affect my voice to sound right for these characters that I'm not right for What's Well, listen, I, when I saw that and heard it, I thought, okay, I don't know the show, all right? But I was listening, I was like, like, this, Bobby, your voice is like, you could play it on the stage. It's like, it's so, the recording is perfect. It's, it's just fabulous. I mean, I, I know that it was with your tongue a little bit in your cheek, but still it was fabulous, very impressive. But anyway, enough about us. But we have, a, we, we're talking about Broadway and um, I know you did that, that Dance of the Vampires for our friend who's gonna be a guest in two weeks. Uh, Rory, um, and so we'll talk more about her uh, when we see her. But today is kind of a special one, a special edition, right? Because it's it's visiting off Broadway, right? Which which is very literal. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the theaters that are not on Broadway and what that means. Um, but just some of the other career paths that stage actors can take that aren't necessarily on Broadway, uh, be that maybe TV, commercials, things like that. So it's really a generalized off the Broadway. Um, and our guest today is a fantastic actress uh, who has performed pretty much in every artistic medium in the industry. Uh, and, it's, and, and it's kind of famous in, in all of them. She's done some really iconic movie roles, really iconic television, really iconic commercial work. Um, she, uh, founded one of um, uh, the most celebrated theaters in Southern California. Um, it's Miss Catherine Cates. Uh, and I actually have a little video to play uh, to introduce her to the group. Um, Catherine uh, is probably best known uh, for her role on Seinfeld um, at the little, uh, oh gosh, what did you call well, A bakery, right? It's a bakery. Uh, she's she was, the babka lady. The babka lady. So here we go. I'm going to try to play it. So just one second. One <laughs> Technical difficulties, and here we go. 47, I'll have to check. <laughs> You're lucky, Mrs. Benedict, it's our last one. <laughs> What's that babka? We've had that babka. What's this one? That cinnamon babka. Another babka? <laughs> there's chocolate, and there's cinnamon. I'll have a cinnamon babka. And a black and white cookie for me. Please. Sold us a hair with a cake around it. You wouldn't have had it with that tray. Hair for phlegm. Here you are. Okay. Did you get you anything else? Oh, no, thanks. How about a nice box of scram? <laughs> All right. So I'm stopping the share, and we are letting in. Miss Catherine, right? (gasps) 
Yes, there she is. Hi. Hi, guys. You can hear me? There's the, yes, we can. There's the troublemaker. Yep. So that's my greatest fear in life is that I'm going to die from coronavirus and they're going to remember me as the babka lady. So oh. <laughs> every job I get, I go, this one, this one is going to wipe out the babka. This one is going to do it, but it never does. It just never does. So. I mean, and, it's the curse of getting uh, getting an iconic part on a on one of the most iconic TV series ever. Yes, Seinfeld's going to be like Cher. It'll go down after the nuclear war with the, the cockroaches. It'll be. I mean, I, I I get checks every other day actually recently because it, everything everybody's running it so much. But um, I worked with an actress named Vianne Cox, and Vianne is a big Broadway New York actress that everybody knows. And we ran into each other backstage one day, and she said, you know all of the work I've done in my life and they remember me from Seinfeld. She was the loud laugher. I think that was her. Anyway, it's just, you can't get rid of it. So celebrate it, be happy about it. Yeah, you get the checks. Yeah. Um, so Catherine, you and Linda know each other for a very long time, right? We do, we did a musical together. We actually were in an off, 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 no, no, that's not true, Linda. It was not. It was an off. The Theater for the New City is a very well established. Okay. It's one of the oldest off Broadway theaters in New York, and um, and it was an absolutely unbelievably hysterical musical. It was actually brilliant, and it, w it we got an amazing review in the New York Times. And then because of some crazy screw up at the theater, we had to close it. Which to this day I don't understand how they let that happen. But it was. Um, it was a phenomenal little magical piece of nonsense that just came together and it was great. It was the great, great. And that's where we met. And that's where we met. Where was it? What was it called though? Dollface. Dollface. Well, oh. You're looking at Dollface right there. It's Linda Shelley. Dollface. 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 And this is Silver Farb. <laughs> Linda's played me stuff from Dollface. Oh my gosh, I've heard about it so it's, much. It's, it's great music. It's really, really great music. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So the theater knew for this. You didn't tell me it was at the theater for the new city, Linda. She doubted. I didn't. Uh, no. She didn't know how iconic that place was. I and sort of do, but you know, I, you know how we are sometimes. I also want to give a shout out to David Foreman, who is the musical genius behind that play, because it's a shame that, it, that they're not banging down his door to do more work, so. Anyway. Yeah, well, yes, and, and David Foreman, um, yeah, musical genius, uh, that's uh, how I met. We have a guest next week. We'll talk probably more about David Foreman next week in terms of Little Isidore, because yeah. that's how we met the guest that's, that we're gonna have on next week, Kurt. But anyway, um, but Catherine, you've done a couple of musicals at Theater for the New City. Uh, no, that was the only one I did there. What about the schoolyard? I wasn't done there. We did that. At, that was part of the Fringe Festival, and I think we were at the Soho Playhouse for that. Uh, but no, we didn't do that there. So, yeah. Kath so, Catherine, you have done all the things, you know, TV, movies, um, work commercials, commercials, Broadway, all of it. Um, but you've done a lot of off-Broadway work in New York City, right? I have. I have. I moved back here. I lived for over 25 years in L.A., and I founded a pretty wonderful theater while I was there. And for the first eight years, when I was very young and stupid, that was all I did. I, I could have been anywhere in the world. I never saw the light of day. I just spent all my time in a blackened theater and we were building a subscription audience. We had a genius artistic director who was very good friends with Ray Bradbury. And Ray gave us, first he gave us the Martian Chronicles, which was this unbelievable hit. We moved it to a full equity production. Ed Harris came, and that was the first time I ever worked with Ed, and he did the equity production of it that we did. But it was mostly the company that moved over with the with the play when we moved it. And that was a big deal back then, to move something from a 99 seat theater to a full equity production was a pretty big deal. But because we had Ray in our back pocket, um, he then gave us Fahrenheit 451 that we put on stage. And then Dandelion Wine was turned into a musical. Jeffrey Rockwell did the un unbelievable music for it. And so we got very famous, very fast. And we also had a company of actors. Um, John Larroquette was an original member. So that, you know, I had a 
we had him and you know, every great show we could put him in, he was in it. And a lot of people going, but why is he in it? Because he's, because he is who he is, is why. So um, hmm. nobody really cared. We were, we were really, we were about 25 members um, who worked as hard as we could work. Some people could donate a lot of time. Some people could donate their talent. Some people hit it. And for 20 years, I didn't know that my friend Tom Kindle was a lighting genius because he didn't want to get up on a ladder. But that was what we were. We were a, a ragtag company and it was back in the days when you could do it for very little money. And we did, and we did. So it was a kind of magical time. And then life went on and other things happened and the company finally got a great big theater in Burbank. And I wasn't really involved at that point. And um, the artistic director decided to, not Karen Shank, uh, to disband the company. And so it sort of fell apart. She continued and ran it for several years after that very successfully. But like with anything, it's an impossible thing to run a theater. So the colony no longer exists, but that's very recent. So she kept it going for a good uh, 10, 15 years after. Um, but I moved back to New York in 2006 and didn't have agents, didn't nobody. I didn't even have old friends. I grew up in New York on Long Island, but I didn't have friends in the city anymore. So suddenly there I was friendless, not homeless. I had an apartment, um, no agents, didn't know what I was gonna do. Um, and threw the covers over my head. And I think I spent a month in bed. When I found out that uh, one of the agents that used to come to my theater all the time had also moved back to New York, I called him and it was a great, wonderful thing. So I went and he was my agent and then my commercial agent started getting me work and I started working. And I mostly started saying yes to everybody. And if it was an off-Broadway thing and we're paying $30, yes, then with this, yes, whatever it was, yes, yes, yes. And I just, lots of readings and lots of, um, just lots of stuff. Some of it was, all of it was terrific. I mean, when you ask me about any play that I did at any dumpy little theater anywhere, I'll tell you I loved it because I did. And flash forward about six years, I walked into New York Theater Workshop to audition for, it's a big deal, New York Theater Workshop. And they were doing an Arab play called Food and Fadwa. And the entire cast and everybody involved in it was from some Arab country and they really wanted an authentic Arab, not a Jew. So I auditioned and the director looked at me and said, you know, I asked six different people to give me the name of a terrific character actress uh -huh. and six different people gave me your name. And I just fell apart crying. Because to me, you know, I'm nothing, I'm no one. I just do whatever I, you know, do with my silly little things. And yet somebody noticed somewhere, I guess. So, People, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna comment on what you said about how you say yes. Mm. Um, and that's one thing, you, Catherine and I have known each other for years and, and we've been very, very good friends. And, um, and one thing that I admire about Catherine, uh, and it is a lesson for everybody, is um, she does say yes to everything. And she has true respect for acting and for plays and for, and for the whole thing. And, and she, so she, I mean, you know, here's a woman that's worked with some of the biggest names in show business and never ever looks down her nose at any creative project. And that, is probably why you're always working. It's probably why everybody always thinks so highly of you. I mean, in addition to the fact that you're really talented and amazing, um, it's it's you know some of some people could take a a, a lesson from you on that, and I, I always respected that. Thank you. Now, I, I did. I had um, a question. Uh, if somebody. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm not going to ask you that question right now. Um, what I'd like to know is uh, to know about some of the other projects that you've worked on in the city of Food and Fadwa, I, I saw. And uh, that was the one where they were cooking on stage, right? It was delicious. Yes. That was a delicious play. It was. Um, and it was fabulous. Really great. You were so funny in it. Yes. Um, one thing I always notice about you, your entrances and exits, you are always coming from somewhere and always going to somewhere. 
And that's, I noticed that so much in that play. Um, and so tell us about some of the other like really great off Broadway shows that you've been involved with. I probably uh, see. Well, the ones that stick out um, are, I worked with a group called the um, Potomac Theater Project. They're interesting. They rehearse at Middlebury College in Vermont and they then come to New York and work at the Atlantic, which is a fabulous Off-Broadway theater. Uh, they have the Atlantic has a smaller theater on 16th Street and that's where Potomac theater people present their show. And what's so terrific is you go up to Middlebury College for uh, six weeks or however long it was and they hire some of the students that are graduating from Middlebury in their acting classes. So the students are working with professional actors from New York. In my case, we did a play that um, uh, we brought the, the lead actress came in from LA. So they bring, you know, they bring in people that they know and they don't care and they have enough money to do it. And um, so this, is a, this was a Howard Barker play. And Howard Barker is a genius playwright. He's in England and people know him in England and they mostly don't know him here. And this play was called Gertrude the Cry. And it's sort of Hamlet, but it isn't. And um, it, did you see that one, Linda? It starts as- I did, I stage. did. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it was, a, it, was a, it was just, it was brilliant. It was, I was working with genius people and I had a fabulous time up in Vermont doing it. And then we had a terrific run here in New York. So that was, was the one with the woman with the blonde hair. She was in the lead. The, very statuesque. That's the one, yes. And yeah, I remember that very stark well. The naked, whole Stark naked having yes. sex over her dead husband. Hard to forget. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes. I forgot about the naked part. Um, how, right. But now you, it's all coming back to me. I was sitting front and center for that one. I'm not sure if I even saw that one twice, but um, yeah, that was that was really great. You were, uh, it was like a funeral and- Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was, it was, and I got to die at the end, and I, I love to die. So, so that good. was fun. And I also worked, one of the first plays I did was at La Mama. And La Mama used to be, I mean, La Mama is, you know, world famous and world renowned. And this, so this was early on when I had just gotten back here. And I worked with uh, a playwright named Saviana Stănescu, who's Romanian. And to this day, I think it's one of the most brilliant plays I've ever done. Very political. It was called Waxing West. And it was about a young Romanian girl who has nightmares. And the Ceausescu's come to her in her nightmares. And her mother, who I played, sets her up in a marriage. And she goes to America to, for this prearranged marriage. And the play dovetails with 9-11. It, it's just a brilliant political piece of amazing theater and I don't know why we so we did it at La Mama we then the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York everybody loved it and they brought us to Romania to do it and then the Romanian Cultural Institute brought us to Sweden to do it so this one little you know off-Broadway play that talking about saying yes to little things you never know I got to travel over half the world with them doing this thing so um that was a that was a terrific a terrific experience and a, and a really brilliant play. What, what city in Romania did you guys perform in? We were in Bucharest and then we, there was a festival in Sibiu, which is, so we drove in caravans. Oh, this was the most amazing trip because it's in the Carpathian mountains. Oh, so family. you're driving through these gorgeous mountains and in the distance you look, see what looks like a classic farmhouse out of some painting with a thatched roof. And as you get closer, it's completely derelict and there's a human being with a yoke with an animal and they're pulling, they're plowing their fields. I mean, we, it could have been century. It was crazy to me. And that's the way they live there. But anyway, we got through to this little town of Sibiu that was charming. They had painted half of it in colorful, bright colors so that it would look, I don't know, like a colorful little city in the middle of this <laughs> drab, unhappy country. Um, and they do this very successful, uh, they also do, Romania also does a big musical festival, classical musical. They're really, it's a, the country made me sad. While most of Eastern Europe was having this fabulous Renaissance, not so, uh, th this place looked like the Ceausescu's left yesterday. The houses were boarded up and the streets were falling apart. There were no real restaurants. It was either five-star hotel or takeaway food. It was. It, it's a sad, sad place, but I was certainly happy that I got to experience it and go there. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to 
leave for one second. Um, Bobby, you've, you've spent time in Romania, haven't you? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave you for a minute and I'll be right back. We'll be okay with that. <laughs> Um, no, I, my, my family's from Sibiu, so. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so I actually went in 2016, I took my 90 year old grandmother, her parents were born and immigrated from a small, not from Sibiu proper, so not from the beautiful medieval village, you know, right. but uh, from a, a town, uh, maybe, maybe 15, 20 minutes away. Uh, and we, me and my little brother, we took her to Romania proper and we went around the country, but we went to Sibiu to see the little village her family came from. Mm. Um, you're driving on the freeways up beautiful Carpathian mountains, you know, um, but like there are horse-drawn carriages on the freeways or on, on, on the roads. And um, it is, you're right. It's, it's, it's beautiful, but it's very sad to travel the country because it does, it's not experiencing the same Renaissance the rest of Europe is, is doing. And it yeah. sucks because they're in the European union. And so they're kind of like, well, why aren't we, why aren't right. we like everybody else? And, um, and the young people, of course, are all obsessed with American culture because of TV and yeah. But it's it's not not the happiest place, you know. Um, I know, I know. Anyway, that's cool that you you got to go there with a play. I wish I had seen theater. My grandma was not into doing anything like that when we were there. But um, right. that that sounds amazing. Oh my goodness! It was, it was. I mean, I'm just so grateful and so thankful to have had that amazing experience. So yeah. Linda, that was so quick. Catherine, look. Oh, thank you, Linda. Very pretty. Because <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> she, <laughs> Catherine, told me, <laughs> Catherine told me to change my shirt. And then I looked at myself and I said, oh, no, she is so correct. Oh my God. And so I always, I always listen to what Catherine says. It's always the good advice. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Well, Catherine, <laughs> So yes. do you have a favorite off-Broadway theater in New York? Do I have a favorite? Probably, and this is going to be, this is always my answer, unfortunately. It's always the last thing I did. And the last thing I did was at the Labyrinth, which oh, wow. is certainly not a beautiful space, but it was an iconic space. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, who established Labyrinth as a, as a group, um, his ex was the director of the production I did. It was called Nice Girl by a Labyrinth member, Melissa Ross, and it was a gorgeous play. Uh, it was four characters and the male lead in the play was Nick Cordero. And unfortunately, Nick Cordero is that beautiful young actor who's now at Cedar sinai in LA going through the worst nightmare I've heard of anybody with COVID. He's had his leg removed, his lungs aren't working, he's on dialysis, he's, it's just been, it is, beyond it is beyond belief that this gorgeous 41 year old guy with just married brand new baby the world and i anyway so i got to work with nick in that and um aside from the fact that it was everything about it was wonderful it was a it was a great group and a brilliant director and a wonderful playwright and all these acts anyway that that that's at the moment my favorite <laughs> yeah no that's um where where in the city is it I it's actually, in the village. It's it's right near where I live. Oh wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I I or Nick, we've been trying to give updates as we've been doing these. Mm. Um, I know that this week hasn't had the best news. Yeah. But I do think this morning things have taken somewhat of a more positive turn. Let's see. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you a little bit. It was. Okay. It, we, Going away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I was saying that on CNN, it, it seems like maybe this morning things might be turning more positive again. Oh, good. Wow. But but it but it is cool actually that uh, CNN has actually been regularly covering. Uh, yeah. This, like you said, it's 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 not only for the Broadway community, the acting community. It's one of probably the most severe COVID cases. Yes. So, yes. Yes. I um I, I've seen him in a couple things. I saw him in. Bullets over Broadway, um, mm -hmm. fantastic in. Uh, right. And um, I think he was in the Toxic Avenger, which is one of the first things uh, I ever saw in New York City. Period. Wow. Not toxic. Toxic Avenger. Yeah. So Toxic Avenger is a classic. Like um, I wouldn't even say it's a B. I saw the movie. Yeah, it's like a C horror movie. 
Uh, but they made it into a musical back in, oh gosh, I want to say like 2008, 2009, it played at New World Stages. And I think Mimic Cordero, don't quote me on it, starred in it. Um, and I think one of the uh, bandmates of Bon Jovi wrote the music to it. I enjoyed it. But I enjoy I enjoy campy off-Broadway stuff, so. That's, those are my favorites. Oh, you would have loved Dollface. You would have loved Dollface. Oh, oh my gosh, we gotta revive it. The, well, that we want to. The, uh, the review in the Times, one of the quotes was um, that it was, he compared it to John Waters. Right. Like, They're total movie. trash or high art. He, yes. He, he absolutely loved it. Yes, and I need to see the show. We have to do it. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so that's your favorite off-Broadway theater, The Labyrinth, um, at least for the moment. Uh, maybe maybe it was at the labyrinth or maybe it's from other experiences i mean do you have any like favorite like actor spots that you hang out maybe like places that you grab lunch with the cast or you know maybe after you know, show it's just always different because the city it, you're you're working all over the city so it yeah i mean everybody's you got to hang out when you've got whatever play you're doing um because that's you're all near it and you walk to whatever it is so uh, but I mean, you know, I'll go to Joe Allen when I have the money and I want something really good. Um, but I'm not up in the theater district all that much. You know, I don't, um, it's not my favorite place to be. And in fact, when I find myself up there, I'm usually scurrying through the mad crowd saying, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. This is not their fault. It's my fault. And that's how I feel about it. You know, I mean, just Broadway is you know, I'm not a musical comedy person, so my options doing Broadway are limited. And especially the last 10 years, they opt for personalities generally. Um, By personalities, you mean celebrities? I mean celebrities. I mean TV names and film names and people who maybe they can be on a stage and maybe they can't. Um, uh, not to denigrate her because I didn't see it, but I know that when Julia Roberts was on Broadway, the critics said Broadway has made her common. You know, I mean, not a nice thing to say, but you know, when you're sitting in a theater and the actor's voice doesn't go past the second row and you just paid over $200 for a ticket, you know, that's not nice, I think. So, you know, Broadway's full of a lot of, um, it's just, you have to really, I don't know, some of it I like and some of it I don't, so. Well, no, it's definitely, it's it's an interesting ecosystem in the whole theater district with it, you know? I think uh, for New Yorkers, it's, if you work in the theater district or you work in the Broadway theater industry, um, mm -hmm. that neighborhood becomes, uh, you know, a habit of necessity. You know, you, you find your favorite bars and restaurants because you have to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I know any New Yorkers who specifically Seek out, let's go to Times Square, you know? <laughs> Although I have heard that Joe Allen's has a very good Bloody Mary. Exactly. Your, your thoughts? Well, I think Joe Allen's is great. I love food and drink. Hey, I have to ask Bobby something. Um, I'm looking in the in the participants and I see Regina Perone. Mm -hmm. Now, but uh, Regina, are you here? Bobby, can you check that out? Is is there something that we need to do to let her in or to be on something? Hey. Here she is. Okay, so we just we didn't want to ignore Regina. So Aww. Regina, so we're gonna just ask you to while we're yes, while I'm, we're, I'll mute mute yourself, <laughs> and then uh, maybe you'll do. You, do you have when we in a little bit? We'll see if anybody has any questions who might be watching on Facebook or YouTube, and you might have some questions. Regina, um, I know is involved with theater and. Uh, always looking for like really great audition songs, um, which is actually a, a question that I have uh, for Catherine, um, because seeing Regina's face made me think of this. Catherine, I know that you do, as you just explained, mostly non-musicals, but you've done a couple of musicals mm -hmm. and I have heard you sing and you are really great. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, you are, uh, and what is like a good audition song? Like, what are your go-to audition songs? Cause you're an alto. Right. I have two. Yes. <laughs> I sing Good to Mama from Chicago. Uh-huh. And, um, and I sing uh, Mrs. Marble cause I, I auditioned for Marble in, um, in Wicked. 
So I, many years I have waited for that one. And uh, because there's a lot of talking in that one. So it's a talky, singy, and I can deliver it um, like that. Okay, interesting. Regina, did you have any questions uh, for Catherine? Anything <laughs> having to do with like auditions or, um, cause I know Regina does a lot of auditioning. She's done a lot of theater. Hmm. Um, and we talk about that sometimes. And you've got Catherine Cates here. I know, might hi Catherine. Part, <laughs> part some wisdom. I don't know, I'll have to think of that. All right, think about it, if you think of anything. Cause we've got, we've got uh, what, 10 minutes? Is that yeah, right, Bobby? 10, 15. You 10, know. 15, okay. Um, but I do love that you brought this up, Linda. So we know what Catherine's audition songs are, but I actually don't know what yours is, Linda. Mine? What is your go-to? You know, it's funny because um, I did sort of just a, a smattering of auditioning um, in New York. Uh, you know, it's funny, like a couple of the jobs that I did um, like Catherine got me in a couple of plays. She recommended me to audition for a couple of things. And then those led to being invited for other things. Um, and I did a little bit of auditioning after I got my equity card because it was fun to walk in and be able to go with an appointment and do that. And it really depends on the show. Uh, so what I would normally try to do is listen to the, to the, to the music of whatever show I was auditioning for and try to do something not from the show. But you actually mentioned this a couple of weeks ago about um, finding something from that same composer and then use that so that you're not doing something from the show because they're sick of that, but it will have the same tone and feel. But let's say it's an original musical. So I don't really know what it's gonna be. My ballad is usually Angels, Punks, and Raging Queens. My brother lived in San Francisco. Oh no. No, it's actually the, the theme, the title tune of that. Uh, I played this dive in the village mm -hmm. um, is the first lyric. Don't make me start singing. Um, no, but that, but that was, the reason I picked that, you know, is um, it was actually in a music book for auditions. And then the first time I did it, I gave the music to the accompanist and I said, my name is Linda Shell, and my, my, my audition song is Angels, Punks and Raging Queens. And always the reaction I would get in the room was, oh. People love and they that. like, cause not everybody was doing it. And it's one of those songs that you love, but you didn't remember that you loved it. So that, I, that became my, and it's very dramatic and, you know, kind of beautiful. Um, and my, my, my up-tempo, I started getting into uh, Baltimore Crabs a lot because it's such a, for me, that character is, is, you know, so I would do that song quite a bit. And also, I just don't think a lot of people did it because it wasn't really like the most popular song in Hairspray. Um, but for me, it was a great belting tune. So yeah, Baltimore Crabs and Angels Punks. But if it was just some normal, like my, really my go-to song is just the corniest, corniest of all songs is, you know, Cabaret, Ring Them Bells, I know you Roses, can Everything's Coming Up. Yeah, I mean, I like those old fashioned, right. ballsy, belting ballads. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Oh, hi, she want, Re Regina's raising her hand, okay. Yes. It's not fair to ask Linda because she can sing and knows everything. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair to ask you what your audition songs well. are. It's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I would like to ask, uh, I do know a lot of songs, but I would like to ask Catherine, um, do you ever, are you ever asked to go in and do a monologue when you audition for a non-musical? Uh, not anymore, I used to. I mean, I used, I, first of all, I will still, if there's a play I wanna do, I'll show up at, a, at an EPA. Um, I don't think anything is beneath me, which a lot of people won't do. And I'll sometimes walk in and they go, you're here? But, uh, you know, it's an EPA and it might be someone I've never met and I heard about it and I want to go in and I do it. Um, and that's actually how I got Nice Girl. I had been, the Labyrinth was a very closed shop and I had been knocking on their door. Can I come in? Can I volunteer? And it was just, they, they didn't really want anybody new coming around. And so I saw that they were holding auditions for something 
And I went to the EPA and Danny Feldman was there and Danny ran the theater and now Danny runs Capacity and Playhouse. Um, so Danny was there and Melissa Ross was there who was the playwright of Nice Girl. And they saw my audition and Mimi called them and said, I just lost somebody for a reading. And it was a reading with Harris Eulin and a bunch of other fabulous people. So they immediately they said, oh, we just saw this woman, she's great. She called me up, I went in and did that. And then I got Nice Girl right after that. So. I think the the moral of that story is don't think an EPA is beneath you, which is an equity open audition for anyone who doesn't know what an EPA is. Um, and all Broadway, all equity shows by law have to hold an EPA, whether they're cast or not. It's to sort of give their members something. And um, well, well, you know what? I mean, I, I wanted to say I wasn't I never looked down on it and I did I did a bunch of those. I did a lot of those so you before I got my card. But you know what the stuff. thing is? The thing is, um, it was so great when I was able to get appointments mm -hmm. because I was juggling so many jobs right. and so many things right. that it meant I didn't have to like take the whole day out to go and wait. Sure. Um, so that that was all I meant by that. I don't want anybody to think like, oh, the EPA is, is uh, I got my card. Oh, but, but no, it was just for the time. You know, when work when actors have agents. I mean, I'm not somebody you would expect to show up at an EPA. Right. It's not. I have, right. I have agents. I, you know, an EPA is for when you can't get in the door at a regular right. position. But I will see that. Oh, look, so and so is the, the playwright. And will Eno, who's a, a really wild off Broadway guy, um, was they were holding, they were doing something at Actors Theater of Louisville, one of his plays, and I dearly wanted to read for it. And I couldn't get in. So I went on Facebook and I saw that Will Eno and I had like 20 mutual friends. I wrote to all of them and I said, is Will Eno a real friend or just a Facebook friend? And five people said he's a real friend. And I said, would you see if you... And I got the audition. Awesome. <laughs> Didn't get the part, but I got the audition. But yes, so there you are. Wow, great idea. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so Catherine, what are you looking forward to most when, um, when this is open up again? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Well, you know, I'm in this new show, Hunters. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing series on Amazon. I got to work with Al Pacino and they're talking about a season two. I don't know that it's going to happen. So if season two of Hunters happens, I'm hoping that they'll bring me back for that. Um, and then of course, I'm always hoping that Snickers is going to do a, a redo. I have, you should have picked the Snickers thing to show. But she's got a Snickers commercial. And it's, it's very good. Funny. It has saved my life during this thing. It's amazing. Kate, Kate Zagarini, you could yeah. do it. Why don't you do it for us? <laughs> well, here's the story of the commercial is a bunch of guys are robbing a truck. And the guy's sitting inside and his hands are up and they all, they all have stockings on their faces and they're holding up a truck. And suddenly their friend comes and he's wearing fishnets. And they go, Pete, what are you doing? Fishnets? He goes, well, you said stockings. And meanwhile, a crowd has gathered across the street. And you hear this woman go, Pete? Pete Zagarine? And he goes, no, no, not Pete. Look, that's Peter. I had him for social studies. Peter, what are you doing? It's very cute. And it's, it's fabulous. So, through all of this, it's still running. So what happens is I'm getting kind of big checks from Snickers with Thank you. You know, it's just amazing. So. And you've also been involved with some some uh, readings, some like uh, of new plays. We're doing um, some Zoom. We're doing some Zoom readings. I mean, actors are trying to keep busy. Unbelievably, today I got a message from my commercial agent asking if I would be willing the to have an audition, an in person audition, on Tuesday. And if I get the part, I have to be willing to fly to Atlanta the third week in June, right? Where the, and SAG is having them do all of this, you know, uh, social distancing and upgraded seats and nobody will be near you. And so we've got a couple of guarantees with it. But this Ow. is the first, I've had some auditions. I've had, because like Disney, I've had a couple of Nickelodeon recurring roles and little animated things. So the voiceover stuff has continued, but this is my very first on camera and I had to make a decision of am I willing to do that or not? And I said, yes, so that's it. Wow. I'm hoping, knock on wood, whatever, um, that, uh, but I mean, I imagine that the union is making sure everything is social distancing and all of that is gonna be safe. 
Oh, I think, I think, you know, and I think, you know, SAG is really good about being protective and I mean, but who knows? I mean, this is a whole brand new world we're in. Um, I, I want to say Regina uh, commented about the Snickers commercial. She said, I saw that. Um, and, and now she said she, she's going to go back and look for you again, because as soon as you did it, she right. realized, oh, that's Catherine. Amazing. Yeah. You, Jean, Regina, I've got a website. You can just CatherineCates.com. You can go look at it. It's there. Oh, good. I will. <laughs> Fun. Regina, anyway. did you have any questions about the, like anything for Catherine, anything that's going on? I don't want to, I don't want to ignore you out there. All right. One quick question, because I didn't know you did voiceovers. Do you have a home studio? I don't. I have my silly iPhone. Okay. I have. I send everything to my brother, and I go, "Would you turn this into an MP3?" And he does. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm the least technical person. Well, that's in the world. awesome, though. That I know, and I actually get work quality's from. working right. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you, Regina? Where are you? Hopewell Junction. Oh, I know Hopewell Junction, New York. Yes. Yes, New York. For anybody yes. else who's out there in the world, anybody who's not from New York doesn't know what Hopewell Junction is. And most people from New York don't know what Hopewell Junction is. That's true. But we, um, I'm really glad that Regina joined in. Um, and uh, I don't know who's out there on Facebook or YouTube land, but thanks for, for joining in. Um, Catherine, any, uh, uh, Bobby, did you have any other questions for Catherine before we sort of I let Catherine go? Any final thoughts, parting thoughts? I could sit here for two hours. Um, so, and I won't do that, but other than just saying, it's been so lovely to chat with you for a bit. Uh, yes. your brain on a couple couple things. Like, uh, this has been so great. I'm so glad that Regina joined us. Um, is there anything, any final like tips or just tidbits you wanna, to the, to the, to the Facebook land, YouTube land, throw out there? Catherine's right in, the, in New York City right yes. now. Here in this nightmare of a place to be. Um, and I think everybody should sit, stay as safe as they can. It's, it's not fun being in New York City right now. Um, I'm fortunate because I live by the water so I can sneak down my stairs and go down nine flights and I'm on the Hudson River. But boy, for people that are trapped in the middle of the city, and I, I mean, I see cars loaded with mattresses every day. People are leaving here in droves. Wow. It's, yeah, it's, it's real. And I don't think you know how real it is until you're here. So. Um, to everybody out there, I say stay safe. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you for guys, being here. really a treat. And one of the things I despise is talking about myself. So I hope <laughs> I did it without <laughs> sounding like an idiot. Um, oh, it's funny that you say that because you are so good at telling a story. It's so much fun to, to watch you talk. We talk a lot on the phone, but it's so much fun to watch you talk. It's one of my favorite things. Look at that face. Uh, so, <laughs> so we'll we'll talk soon. Thanks again. I'm gonna we're gonna stay here. Um, okay, you can so hang around or you can go. I'll go, I'll go. But thank you. Okay. Guys. okay. Thanks, Catherine. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Regina. Good to see you. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to say um, next week uh, we have another special guest. Right, Bobby, and the theme is going to be um, from stage to screen, and maybe stage to screen and back again. I don't know. We... Back again? Oh, that gives me some ideas. Okay. I know. I know. And sometimes it actually works. Sometimes you know you go from stage to screen, and you end up with something fabulous. It's been done many times. I mean, they did it with Oklahoma, they did it with Carousel, West Side Story, Fiddler on the Roof, nice. and one of the leads in um, Jesus Christ Superstar is going to be with us next week, Kurt Yajian. Yajian. What I'm most looking forward to asking Kurt next week is how to say his name. Yeah, that would be a good one. Um, that would be a good one. No, this is so exciting. And I won't I won't say anything else because I'll save it for the episode. Um, but it's going to be very exciting to talk about stage to screen and maybe back again uh, next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. for Pacific Coast Friends. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Regina. Thanks, Regina. Catherine. Thanks, Facebook and YouTube, and special thanks and love out to Catherine Cates, the fabulous, talented, wonderful Catherine Cates. Everybody stay safe. Bobby, 
Um, we'll talk soon. Maybe we could talk right after this. I'll get us a room. Get us a room, Linda. Get us okay. a room, okay? All right, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. everybody. Cheers. <laughs>